in three, two, and one. Good evening, everyone. I know we're having a great time off camera, but we had to get started. So let's get to praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. We adore you so much. We thank you for all who are here in attendance. We just thank you for health and healing within their bodies. Thank you for using them for the supernatural. Thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles that you bestowed upon them with so much unconditional love. We thank you for those that you put before them, new and old, that all they say and do is of you and not of themselves. We thank you for the lesson that the Holy Spirit will bring before us, that all he says and does, we will apply into our lives and take to a world that is good, holy, and beautiful. We thank you for hearing us and have always heard us. We love you because you first loved us and we decree and declare this prayer done in your name. We pray, amen, amen, and amen. amen. Oh, praise your point, praise your point, praise your point. Come on, come on. <laughs> Anthony, yes, quickly. I have, I, have, I have quite a bit of ideas. My oh, car got... finally sold. Yes, we told you. We told you. Well, you exactly, told us. Exactly. I got the exact price I asked for as well. Too easy. Now, watch this. There was no resistance, were there? No. From the time we, from the time we talked mm -hmm. and the time that you had the process, no mm -hmm. resistance. Now, I will say this. When you're buying the house, it has to be the exact same thought. Mm -hmm. It has to be that exact same flow. You don't have to worry about all the intricities and all the details. That's step two. <laughs> Congratulations. The best part, both of us became friends. Oh, and you made a friend? Oh, we can end right there, man. <laughs> Same, same time, because they are all same age, both of them. But this is what, now watch this. Oh, this is such a great teaching moment. This is what we teach when we talk about law of attraction. You send out the, the, the vibration of, watch what your word said. I want someone to do what? Watch out for the car like I'm going, now you got a mirror. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now you have someone that is so much similar to you that will take such compassion with your baby that you're giving away that has gotten you from A to B. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now you start talking and wow, hey, I like that too. Wow, I like that too. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is so fun, man. You can't make that up. <laughs> and that's like the, that is to me the cherry on top. See the seller of the car, ah, that's yeah, it's not that child. It's the friendship. That's the holy instant that we teach about. It's that holy instant that you came together and bridged together two worlds. Wow. To come together and make a union called a friendship. Yes. I, I think the best, uh, the best thing was uh, the, the buyer actually said something to him. You're the nicest person I ever met. <laughs> and he goes like, Oh, I said, just take it, just take it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but he, when he compliments you, he's complimenting himself because he's complimenting the one. Make sense? Oh yeah. And then you're like, man, you're you're cool too, man. Man, you're yeah. No yeah. argument. No, no. A, he's a very good, very nice person also. Absolutely, absolutely, and. Were they local or did they come far? They're, he's a foreigner. Yeah. Huh? He's, 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 he's a foreigner. He's, yeah. he's from China. No, I'm saying, but does he live here? I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he lives uh, next, 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 next town from here. One so hour. it's actually quite far. It's a one hour trip just to come here and look at the car and then go back yeah. and then the next day come here and look make your the payment. And <laughs> See, now you got an hour trip to go hang out somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, very awesome. All right. Any others? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, and oh, because yeah. I saw the car, I'm getting myself a new form. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, wait. And the, and the new car. Oh, the deliciousness. Yes. Oh, the fun of it. Oh, and then six months will be, oh, man, I got to pay the note on this thing. <laughs> 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 All right. Any other praise reports? Yes, yes. Any other? Uh, All good? All good. Oh, All yeah. right. We are on page 714. And everything that we've talked about, even offline and online, relates to this topic, which is 
bridge to the real world. You've always heard us talk about the illusion, the illusion, the illusion, the illusion. The ego projects the illusion. Anson and his friend under the illusion of the separation. Not Anson, but his friend. <clears throat> Make sense? So now when we talk about the real world, what is the real world? Ooh. The awakening, right? It's the, yes. It is the truth that, remember we used to teach in this, in this course, truth that is always true in some holy scriptures they say the truth shall make you free or something to that effect yes mm -hmm. well when you know the truth that is always true now there's no illusion to it yes does that make sense mm -hmm. in other words you don't try in other words i have I'm, I'm not going to use answer i'm going to use me i used to be a yes man Everybody come to me, yes, yes, yes. In my heart, I want to say no so bad, but yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Even though I saw them using me, I was putting on the blinders, which was the illusion. Mm -hmm. Now, because of that illusion, made me hold animosity toward them for using me, even though I'm the one saying, yes, yes, yes. But deep inside, I want to go, no, no, no. Go ask somebody else. <laughs> you had a thousand people to go ask by me. Mm -hmm. Make sense? So when we start looking at the real world, it's like Melissa said, it's the awakening of the Christ consciousness, which means perfect mind of freedom. To do what? Create anything you want unlimited power let them have what dominion over what all of the earth mm -hmm. and this is what that means so now when you begin to pray hey i want someone to, who is compatible like me who has the right amount of money to buy my car don't care what distance guess what now the real world comes in because there was no illusion was there there was no fakeness mm -hmm. Melissa, how many fake people you get come along and, oh, well, I'm thinking about buying this house and then you run a credit score and it's 350 and they trying to buy the biggest thing out on the lot. <laughs> <laughs> the illusion, right? Mm -hmm. And they want, they come to Melissa and they want her to, to wave the magic wand and do the numbers when they don't qualify. Mm -hmm. And then get mad at her for not qualifying them. So no real world, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the bridge? What is the bridge? Melissa gave y'all the hint. The bridge is the Holy Spirit. Ooh, ah, we didn't think of that. We like that one better. Is it the transition to the fifth dimension too? Yes. And this is where everyone is shifting to. Mm. If, if you notice, is your son yellow? Yeah. No. Your I, son hasn't. Your son has not been yellow in a long time. <laughs> hey, no. You never noticed. <laughs> <laughs> your son is actually technically white. Mm -hmm. Yellow is only when it's about to set. <laughs> But years ago, in the 70s, your son was yellow. Oh. Yes. Everything changes. You're going, everybody's shifting. Everybody's I, shifting. Sorry, I noticed that the sun is very yellow in LP. Mm -hmm. And Melissa explained it's a small. And I go like, oh, I miss Vancouver. <laughs> yes. Here in America, that smog. <laughs> Sometimes we think it's cloud mode, that's smog. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So the bridge, we like Melissa's answer better, Holy Spirit connects us to the real world. We were going to say the awakening, as she said before, but bridge is, Holy Spirit is much better, much, much, much better, because he does connect us to the real world because he takes the what? Blinders off. Yes. Once the blinders come off, now you don't make excuses anymore. Now 
You can say no without feeling guilty. You can say no without explaining the no. I, oh, I had to learn that one too. Why? Well, because I got to do this and I got to do that. And then they talk me into it. Then they try to talk me into it. And yes, and I'd be just mad again. So I just be no, <laughs> no. Yeah. And then so they sometimes, keep... sometimes people will say, um, after I replied no, and then they'll insist, you know, can you just consider, reconsider? I say, okay, yep. let me do it. No. Still no. No. <laughs> Still no. Still no. <laughs> exactly. And there's nothing wrong with the no, even though we want to help, but we can't help everybody that way because they have to eventually learn to use their faith. Mm. Then you have to ask yourself this one important question. Did the Holy Spirit tell you to do it? Mm. And if the answer is no, your word should be what? No. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. If the Holy Spirit didn't tell you, right? Holy Spirit is the comforter and teacher, and he will do what? Teach you all things, yes or no? Correct. So every time we come into a situation, we should always go to the Holy Spirit first and get guidance from the Holy Spirit on a yes or a no. Just like, for instance, how many of you have blessed a homeless person? All of you. Who told you to do it? Holy Spirit. Did you feel guilty afterwards? Hopefully not. If you didn't, then it was a blessing. <laughs> we just saying. <laughs> Does that make sense, though? Okay. All right. So how do you find the bridge to the real world? Mm. Meditate, 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 mm. meditate. You have to quiet the mind from resistant thinking. Mm. Once you quiet the mind, now... The Holy Spirit bridge allows the blinders to come off, and now you can see the truth. And not only can you see the truth, you start speaking the truth. Now, let me say this. When you start speaking your truth from the highest level of the Holy Spirit, you're going to lose some friends. <sighs> uh, yeah. You've been warned. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because people don't like to hear the truth. In America, you're using a term called woke. Oh, we don't, we want, they don't want people to be woke. They're trying to put it in the laws about this thing called woke, which is basically, um, it all deals with politics and racism, to be truthful. That's really what it entails without going into the details. But if you think about it, what's the opposite of woke? Sleep. So in reality, they're saying, we want you all to stay ignorant and sleep and foolish to our games. And we don't want you to wake up to the truth of the history that has been done in this country. It, it, isn't that very evil? Is it what? That's no good, right? It means you don't have a good intention for, for others. Yeah. Here's what happened. I'll give you the lay down. Because slavery happened here in America, people are coming to awareness of the history of slavery and how bad it was and all the stuff that we had to go through and still going through with the police killing. Da, 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 da. So what they want to do is they want to say, we don't want you to say the word woke because Caucasian children might feel guilty about what their ancestors did to African-Americans. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. It's a lopsided view instead of saying, we want ours to be protected and we don't want them to know the truth, but it's okay for you all. Yeah. And now they're even trying to say, no, 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 slavery was not slavery, it was involuntary. Mm -hmm. Like somebody just volunteered to go, go get beat and whipped and tortured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they want to still sleep and not woke. Does that make sense now? All right. So how do you cross the bridge to the real world? Willingly. Willingly. Come on. That's it. <coughs> if there's not, and you should be answered. Seek and you shall find. Ask and will be what? Given to you. Yes. But if you never knock, the door won't open. If you never seek, 
you'll never find. If you never ask those questions, you'll never get those answers. Yeah. Ooh, good stuff. Affirmation, I leave it up to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The search for special relationship is the sign that you equate yourself with the ego and not with God. For the special relationship has value. It, I'm sorry, for the special relationship has value, it has no meaning. For it perceives all love as special, yet this cannot be natural, for it is unlike the relationship of God and his son. And all relationships that are unlike this one must be unnatural. For God created love as he would have it be and gave it as it is, unconditional. People coming in and try to put conditions on God. So now he's not really a unconditional God. He's a serve me when everything's going good and strike you down when you do something wrong to me. Yeah. For God, love has no meaning except as its creator defined it by his will. It is impossible to define it otherwise and understand it. Oh, here's the key. Love is freedom. So when they say, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ, that is the perfect mind of freedom because he was the direct representative of the father, which was love. This is why he taught love. Mm -hmm. To look for it by placing yourself in bondage is to separate yourself from it. For the love of God no longer seek for union and separation, nor freedom and bondage. As you release, so will you be released. Forget this not, or love will be unable to find you and comfort you. This is why they came over the song, Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places. There is a way in which the Holy Spirit asks your help. Holy Spirit asks help? Ha, <laughs> yes, somebody called it. I was saying that did go the wrong way around. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are one, yes. In order, in order for you to release all your fear, all your hate, all your, you have to work with the Holy Spirit. Mm. So people ask, hey, take this away from me, but he asks you for your help in what? Releasing it. Yes. So what they'll do is they'll give it to him and he'll say, okay, I'm gonna go. And they'll say, no, 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 don't die. And they'll snatch it out of his hands. And they'll say, well, we really, really don't want it. Take it back. And then they'll give it to him and they'll snatch it back again. Yes. See the vicious cycle? Yeah. So he's constantly asking for your help to say what? Let it go. Oh. Mm -hmm. Release it and let it go. If you would have him, but here's the thing. One, they don't listen mm. they, because they don't meditate. When you don't meditate, you don't get revelation. And when you don't get revelation, there's no discernment. <laughs> Make sense? The holy instant is his most helpful aid in protecting you from the attraction of guilt. There's your answer, Anson. <laughs> the real lure in the special relationship. So now you are dealing with a special relationship called a friend. You do not recognize that this is its real appeal for the ego has taught you that freedom lies in it. Yet the closer you look at the special relationship, the more apparent it becomes that it must foster guilt and there must what? In prison. You can only do it on, oh, really? That's my only day. I've been waiting on you. You feel that guilt? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we're inclined to go, oh man, I tell you what, let me look at my calendar. Let me do this. And then we start making adjustments that we really don't want to do to appease the other person when simply we should say what? No. No. Everybody, no. no. <laughs> exactly. The special relationship is totally meaningless without a body. If you value it, you must also value the body. And what you value, you will keep. The special relationship is a device for limiting yourself to a body and for limiting your perception of others to theirs. The great way would establish the total lack of value of the special relationship if they were seen. For in seeing them, the body would disappear because its value would be lost. And so your whole investment in seeing it would be withdrawn from it. You see the world you value. Hmm. You see the world you value. 
So now here, here's the real question. What world are you looking at and what world did you create? Because you all are creators of your own reality. Mm. Mm. On this side of the bridge, you see the world of separate bodies. This is the, when Anson says 5D, that's straight unconditional love. 3D, you're going to deal with issues, guilt, fear, anger, all those types of things. Seeking to join each other in separate unions and becoming one by losing. When two individuals seek to become one, they are trying to decrease their magnitude. Each would deny their power, but the separate union excludes the universe. Everybody get that? No. No? Okay. So what happens is you and I get together. We try to come up with a project. All of a sudden, you have one idea. I have another idea. We didn't pray one bit to the universe. We didn't ask God for not one bit of guidance. We went in with our own natural knowing, and now there's separation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Far more is left outside than would be taken in. In other words, this is where miscommunication comes in. Mm -hmm. For God is left without and nothing taken in. So if, remember I said earlier, everything should start with the Holy Spirit. Everything should, Holy Spirit, Holy, Holy Spirit, comfort and hope, that, right? Mm. If it's not, then God is left out. So now, misunderstanding, fights happen, separation, arguments, things like that. <clears throat> it even goes to the point where people get divorced. Mm. Yep. If such a union were made in perfect faith, your universe would enter it. Yes. Yet the special relationship, the ego does not include even one whole energy. The ego wants but part of them. The ego only wants what part? That's it. And seems only this part and nothing else. Here's the good stuff. Across the bridge, it is so different. When we talk about this bridge, we're really talking about the other side of the veil. Mm -hmm. the veil is the invisible or the unseen that you all would call heaven and dimensions and so forth and so on mm -hmm. for a time the body is still seen but not exclusively as it is seen here the little spark that holds the great rays within it is also visible and this spark cannot be limited long to littleness so when we talk about this great white way we're talking about the the essence of who you are in other words we all call you a divine spark of god yes this is what we're talking about so that great ray that light that comes from god you are you are that light mm. you're light of the world you've heard that phrase mm -hmm. yeah have you ever encountered people who love you and when you enter a room they light up when they yeah. see you oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so think about it. This is, if you can imagine God, one trillion times that love lighting you up. Mm. Oh, man. That's what that is. Once you've crossed the bridge, the value of the body is so diminished in your sight that you will see no need at all to magnify it. Yeah. We told you that the body is only used as a communication device. Mm -hmm. Nothing more, nothing less. Mm -hmm. So if you hit your not so funny bone, you don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so the signal says hurt. The yeah. body also tells you cries, communication. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> For you will realize that the only value the body has is to enable you to bring your brothers and sisters to the bridge with you and to be released together there. Mm -hmm. So when they are ready and open-minded and you create a great friendship, when they drive an hour and a half, man, you bring them to the bridge. Mm -hmm. Now they're awakened because you're not fighting them, they're not fighting you. Mm -hmm. Harmony, peace, union. Oh, there it is. The bridge itself 
is nothing more than a transition in the perspective of what? Reality. 3D, 5D. On this side, everything you see is grossly distorted and completely out of perspective. What is little and insignificant is magnified, and what is strong and powerful cut down to littleness. In the transition, there is a period of confusion in which sense of actual disorientation may occur. But fear not, for it means only that you have been willing to let go your hold on the distorted frame of reference that seemed to hold your world together. In other words, I went from saying yes to start saying no, but I had to ask the Holy Spirit first, yes or the no. Mm. Make sense? Yeah. This frame of reference is built around the special relation. Without this illusion, there could be no meaning you would still seek it there. Mm. Fear not that you will be abruptly lifted up and hurled into reality. Mm -hmm. Time is kind. And if you use it on behalf of reality, <clears throat> it will keep gentle pace with you in transition because you are a time master. Mm -hmm. This is why mm -hmm. you have dominion over time and over space. The urgency is, the, is only in dislodging your mind from its fixed position. This will not leave you homeless and without the frame of reference. Anson, do you remember when you was meditating and you went into the void and you felt like this is what we're talking about? There was no fixed position for you to go because there was nothing. People feel like they have to do something when they're there. So now if you're conscious and awoke, now you don't get confused by this transition. Some people call it the dark night of the soul. In other words, you start facing all your fears. You start um, forgiving your past, forgiving yourself, releasing all that old energy that doesn't serve you. Mm. The period of disorientation, which precedes the actual transition, is far shorter than the time it took to fix your mind so firmly on illusions. This is why it's hard for people to break habits. Bad habits are nothing more than the illusions. Pastor, I just can't stop smoking. <laughs> I just got to, they stressing me out. You don't know what they're doing to me on that job. You don't know what that woman doing to me. <laughs> and they just smoke, 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 smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all have seen them, yes? Uh-huh. Delay will hurt you now more than before. Delay will hurt you now more than before. Why? Just prolonging the nightmare. Absolutely. When you put things in the future, you're delaying. Yes. I'm going to be rich. No, you're rich now. I'm trying to do. No, you're doing it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Only because you realize it's, it is delayed and that escape from pain is really possible. Find hope and comfort rather than despair in this. You could not long find even the illusion of love in any special relationship here, for you are no longer wholly insane and you would soon recognize the guilt is self betrayed for what it is. Nothing you seek to strengthen in the special relationship is really part of you, and you cannot keep part of that thought system that taught you it was real and understand the thought, meaning God's thought, that knows what you are. You have allowed the thought of God, of your reality into your mind. And because you have invited it, you will abide with it. Your love for it will not allow you to betray yourself and you could not enter into a relationship where it could not go with you for you would not want to be apart from it. In other words, once you get the sweetness of God, you don't want to let it go. Does that make sense? <clears throat> okay, we're going to jump down to page uh, 718. Mm. 718. All the other stuff you already get. <laughs> 718, where am I? Oh. I'm going to start where it says the new perspective. Mm. The new perspective you will gain from crossing over will be the understanding of where heaven is. Mm -hmm. Where is heaven? It's in the mind. 
in your mind. It's in your heart. Your mind and your heart. Are, always remember your mind and your heart are one. If you part at your heart, you're part, it's the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're the same. From this side, it seems to be outside and across the bridge, yet as you cross to join it, you will join with you and become one with you, and mm -hmm. you will think in glad astonishment that for all this you gave up nothing. Mm -hmm. You didn't lose anything. The joy of heaven, which has no limits, is increased with each light that returns to it takes its rightful place within it. Wait no longer for the love of God in you. Hmm. Everybody get that? Wait, People, no longer means already happened right now. Greater is he, love, already within you. When did it happen? Now. Yeah. And may the holy instant speed you on the way as it will surely do if you but let it come to you. And that's the part. People keep everything so close. Nothing gets in. I don't, let, I don't want that in either. Million million dollars. No, Pastor, don't want that either. Relate, no, nope, don't want that either. <laughs> Nothing gets in. <laughs> if you don't want it, give it to me. <laughs> I got a basket. <laughs> exactly. Give it to me. I'll, I'll show you what to do with it also. <laughs> The Holy Spirit asked, oh, let's see, where are we? Okay, here we go. The Holy Spirit asked only this little help of you. Whenever your thoughts wander to an ego thought, which still attracts you, enter with the Holy Spirit into a holy instant right now. In other words, is that thing happening right now? No. This is when I begin to shift into the wind now this is how i get to enter with him into a holy instant when i get there this is where i allow him to release me now i can let it go i can say no without feeling guilty and i can hug him and love him they can cry and boohoo and give every excuse and i can still say like lily let me give you reconsider no <laughs> and still smile and not only smile, go to bed and just. <clears throat> the, the worst thing is these guys are all the yes men, and I have to stand around and say no. <laughs> the bad guy. <laughs> I'm not, like I'm guarding, guarding them. That's okay. My wife was she saved me from yes to no. <laughs> I would say no. I would say yes, and she'd be behind me. No. <laughs> she said. She said it. <laughs> Next time, next time I'll be a bit, I will be a bit smarter. Let me ask her. <laughs> yes. See, we learn, right? <laughs> let me let me ask my wife first. They already know it's gonna be a no. Yeah. <laughs> they already know. As soon as you go to the wife, oh man, you can't make a decision on your own. No nah, man, we won. We do every. We a business. We business team. We team Flutie over here, baby. We team Mika's over here. Baby. I don't know what team you got. <laughs> oh, I say, I'll ask my mom first. <laughs> yeah, let me ask my mom. <laughs> Ain't you how? I'm we in a business. This team, this team answering right here. <laughs> you can call me a mama's boy. She's always right. <laughs> I'm still a mama boy. My mama ain't here. <laughs> hey, that's okay. I'll be a mama's boy. Uh huh. I will be a mama's boy if it's going to give me peace. Yes. Yes. All day. <laughs> oh, where we were doing? Oh. oh. He needs only your, oh, Lily, you said it. He only needs your willingness to share the Holy Spirit's perspective to give it to you completely. And your willingness need not complete because his is perfect. In mm -hmm. other words, this is step two. You don't have to worry about the, the details of it. When I get in and push the car to start it on, I don't need to know the combustion of the gas and all. I don't need to know that. I need to know it's going to start. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is his task to atone for your unwillingness by his perfect faith. And it is his faith you share with him, God, there. Out of your recognition is given. Call upon him 
for heaven is at his call and let him call on heaven for you. Amen. Pretty simple, yes. All right. Next week, we're going to talk about the end of illusions. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Questions, comments, concerns? When are we getting on to heaven? <laughs> right now. Yes. See, people are trying to wait on a place that's already within them now. Uh -huh. Why do I got to wait on a treasure that God already gave me? Yes. Sir. Yes. Well, Stanley has a question. We have an answer. No. Okay. Okay. So, uh, we can't hear you. Uh, so, okay. So, when you were talking about like uh, how like that, how it's not an illusion, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, can you elaborate? Okay, he was saying that, okay, for example, a drinking problem is an illusion. Yes. Yeah. But according to him, if in a, in a family, somebody is addicted into uh, drinking, mm -hmm. right? And then the children being born in that mm -hmm. uh, household looking at the dad the parent being uh drinking you know mm -hmm. um it's also suffering because who knows you know if the, the parent is drunk he will start beating the kids or mm -hmm. beating the wife or, or do 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 things like that correct okay but as the kids as the kids they mm -hmm. are helpless they have no power Mm -hmm. You know, then so how can we say, according to him, how can we say that it is an illusion? Well, because the they're dealing, with, because they're dealing with a fear, and you have to remember, you all came into this soul with contracts. You all have contracts. You all put on the meat suits to play certain roles. So when there's mass shootings, these are karmic debts being played out. So when an, a, a father takes a child and throws them against the wall and kills the child, this is a karmic debt because that child in a former life chopped the pop's head off. Y'all don't see it. You don't understand it, but it's not taught. But these are like the deja vus that y'all experience. Mm. So you all call them generational curses because the father who's um, addicted to drinking is dealing with fears within himself that he has not acknowledged. So when I was a drunk, great example, I was dealing with fear of not getting killed, uh, wife not cheating on me. I could go all the way down the list of why I used alcohol as a cop out mm. until I really started going down that rabbit hole and saying, this is really what I'm fearful of. This is the real issue. And that's the problem. Most people that are addicted to drugs won't admit that they have an addiction problem. Yeah. And then when you tell them they have an addiction, now they're ready to, to defend and attack you. Mm -hmm. So when we're dealing with people like that, for me, I'm attracted to those people because I can talk to a drunk you can't talk to a drunk because you've never been a drunkard. You've never been addicted to the alcohol. I know what the alcohol does to the body. I know what it feels like when they have the hang. I, I understand the rage and the anger and the hurt and the whatever they're going through. So now I can meet them at their level and we can go back down where they might've been molested as a, as a young boy. They might've gotten, they might've got bullied. They might have got um, frightened by something that they wouldn't explain. It could be a thousand things of why they chose that. Once we identify that fear, it's easy to get them to change their mind if they're willing, but they have to be willing. That makes sense. Yeah, I think I think what um, maybe what Stanley uh, was talking about is. 
those things seem to be real. Yeah. That the being drunk, being uh, uh, abusive to the to the children. So mm -hmm. how how is it we still call it a delusion? Well, because can you kill the spirit? No. So you all are you all are only bodies for a very short time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're only playing these roles out. And I think that's what's really confusing to humans is because you look at everything as real and not the truth that this is a spirit. Right. This that you're looking at is not my body. You're seeing a spirit within this body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so actually, we are just looking at the movie being played and it happens to be the actor, right? Correct. How real, no matter how real it is, it's actually just a movie being played by... Mm -hmm. And you have to remember this. You all had an entrance called birth and you all have an exit called death. The reason why you have an entrance called death so you can come in and learn the things that you didn't know so that you can grow as a spirit. Your death, however it may be, is so that you can release everything so you can go on and create new things so you don't, and you do, carry baggage with you. Mm -hmm. This is why you see people with tattoos all over their face that bring those issues from the past into reality, this reality that they call now, and they tried to hide the scars of what they were tormented on. So if they were proclaimed witches in the 16th, 17th century, and they were burned at the stake, you'll see many of them with tattoos from head to toe. Mm -hmm. You'll see many of them with drug addiction. You'll see many of them, as, as Stanley's asking, with addiction problems. And nobody addresses it because they will say, these are mental issues. Mm -hmm. So now they'll address it as mental issues, but then they will never address the mental issues. They will prescribe drugs and not address the mental issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when they go to the therapist, if they can afford the therapist here, do you see the, do you see the, the hypocrisy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because here, if you go see a therapist, it's gonna cost you by the hour. Yeah. True or false? Yes. Yeah. So I think system, therapists, they don't talk about your past life. You talk about the right now. Right, but people, to answer Stanley's question, people, because it's not taught and known, mm -hmm. it becomes the reality because they go, if I pinch myself, it hurts. Yeah. That's a reality to you. Mm. So, so actually we're calling whatever each and every one of us are going through right now, mm -hmm. we are experiencing is still called an illusion. Correct. Until, okay. until we find ourselves and willing to connect with Holy Spirit and God, Correct. then we start seeing the truth. Now, let me say this to answer Stanley's question. When you begin to see the truth and you see those type of addictions... Now the Holy Spirit will begin to give you revelation on what to say to help fix it. Um, now this child is not in an abusive relationship or in an abusive situation. Now you become the light. Now you become the aid. Now you become the voice. Now you became the law. I had to take you through the whole transition of how it works because there's so many factors in that one question. I can't give you just one answer. There's too many factors in, into it. But at the end, <clears throat> you're all a playing role, just like your dreams. You all have had dreams and you can you come out of your dreams and cannot explain your dreams. But if I were to tell you that you all leave your bodies and go to different places and come back with fragments of the dreams that sometimes you call nightmares or something that you can't explain. How many of you have? How many of you have had that? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. When they put the sensors on your brain, you go through your alpha, beta, theta, gamma, correct? Yeah. Of your sleep pattern. So now, what is your mind doing? Where do you go? So is this real or is it an illusion? <laughs> when I lay hands, watch this. The medical doctors will come and tell a person they have stage four cancer and they have six months to live. Mm -hmm. They'll come to me and I'll lay hands on them. They'll go back, get a prognosis, clears them of cancer, and it baffles the medical mind. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing. They cannot explain 
the act other than God. And they can't explain God. It's just, oh, this is a miracle. Or they cannot explain it. And we do that over and over and over. Even when we raise up dead people, it's the same concept. They don't understand what we know in terms of the secrets. So once you understand this is just a game, this is just a role, and you are in control, you begin to write your own script. This is why I say you all are the creators of your own realities. Mm -hmm. So you all have agreed to come in like Stanley agreed to be Melissa's son, but in a former life, he was probably her great grandfather. Oh my God. And I'm being, and I'm being dead serious when I say that. Mm. <laughs> it's just different, different. You role all play. have played the game. Okay. How many of you have had deja vu? Let's talk about this. Let yeah. me stop this real quick. Okay. 